Georgia Tech. This is, mm-hmm. I think, this is one of the more interesting uh, teams to analyze because they did lose some some players. They lost they lost Jeff Sims. Okay, they lost uh, Nate McCollum. They lost Keon White. They lost Walden. They they lost they lost a lot. Um, like a lot of like high end, like their higher end talent from last year. A lot of that is gone. But is there reason to believe that this team could be pretty good? Uh, maybe over under four and a half wins. How are you feeling about that CD? This is a play to me. I think over four and a half is a wow. play. I see them at six wins, to be honest, and and with potential for more, depending on how uh, UNC could slip up, right? Maybe Ole Miss, depending on how good Ole Miss is. Louisville week one with Jeff Brom, who knows? Uh, but we'll get into it. Brent Key is a new coach technically, but he was interim last year. He's been around the program for a while. And the interesting thing about intern coaches, a lot of time you need a change of – um, like you need a you need a pretty a pretty large change, and a lot of times if you if you hire an interim head coach to be the full time guy, he's not going to really clean house because it's a lot of his buddies, a lot of his guys that were on staff with him that he believes in. But he he recognized that he needed to make a ton of changes. Only kept two coaches. The new staff, I know guys in uh, in the media circles around Georgia Tech are really impressed with. They've done a good job recruiting so far. They know their weaknesses, they know their strengths, what they need to build on. The schedule isn't too bad in the ACC, which is why I lean towards the over. Because you do get Louisville at home, right? Even though I'm high on Louisville, but Louisville at home, you get Wake Forest, you play at Miami, Boston College, Virginia, Syracuse. Like that's four or five wins right there. I think, yes, the out of conference is tough. You get two SEC opponents, which the Georgia game every year is so brutal. This is the worst, one of the worst rivalry games, I think, in terms of like lopsided. Poor Georgia Tech has to play Georgia every year. And then a lot of times they play another Power Five team. And so, I mean, it's it's tough. It's tough on them for sure. Uh, but, yeah, I, they lose Nate McComb. Um, they lose Keon White, obviously, the NFL. But their O-line, everybody comes back, all five of them. Yes, they weren't very good last year. And they have struggled switching since Paul Johnson switched from, you know, this, this um, offensive lineman of the triple option and then to this new age offensive line with the pro-style offense or spread offense, it's been bad for all on there. But they got all five that started that Georgia game last year at the end of the season. All five are coming back. They had a whole offseason to work together. The two tackles are both freshmen. They're back, sophomores, more experienced. We'll see about the wide receivers. Nate McComb, obviously off the UNC, is tough. Malachi Carter off the NFL. But Dominic Blalack from Georgia had a nice spring and has had success in the SEC. Uh, if healthy, he'll be nice for him. Christian Leary at Bama was kind of one of the odd men out. Highly recruited guy, has a lot of talent there. Early feedbacks are really good on him. Chase Lane, I know you're familiar with him at AM. If he can fix his drop issues, you know, I who knows in, in year four or five with him. But at a quarterback, that's the real question. Jeff Sims is gone, but we'll see. I think, yes, he's a very talented player. Yes, he'll probably have success at Nebraska, but I think both sides needed a fresh start. Uh this this competition will leak into fall camp for sure. Hayes King came in was kind of the favorite to come in and take over for Texas Tech, but Zach Pyron, right, true freshman last year, played a little bit when Sims went down. The players like him. He's young, but, you know, the players liked him. He played a little bit last year. Uh, so having two quarterbacks that both have Power 5 experience, it's not a bad thing just because they don't have a quarterback yet. doesn't mean that both are bad. Um, but, yeah, I, I I like the over on this one. Brent Key, the more I looked into this team, uh, Buster Faulkner, last point real, real quick, is the new offense coordinator. Um, he coached at Georgia last year. Yes, he was only the quality assistant for the QB coaches, but they had Todd Monk. Like, they had a bunch of guys, right? That that staff was just loaded for Georgia. Um, he is an Atlanta native, native, which is nice, just recruiting ties and, like, Georgia Tech ties in general. But he's had a ton of success calling plays as offense coordinator, more so at the G5 level with Arkansas State and Southern Miss. Yeah, top but 20 offense passing. with Arkansas yep. State. Yeah, and top 20 passing game. Justice Hansen, Miss. name drop, boom. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I, and then we'll talk about defense later, but yeah, that that's that's what I got. Um, I I like I like the short tech team, you know. I think they got they're gaining some momentum on the recruiting trail and it, it might transfer over to the regular season. 
Right. I, okay. I do. I do want to ask you some questions. So I'm. I'm totally neutral in this, but I can be convinced. I, I didn't have a lean over or a lean under. Um, my my concern was last year, their linebacking core was horrible. It was terrible. All right. Let's look at a t- an interesting stat for linebackers right now. This depends on scheme a lot, right? But in four two five, okay. If your average depth of tackle is four yards you're not doing something right. That's what their linebacking core was last year. Their average yard depth of tackle was at four yards in a four through five. I don't know if I love that. For reference, NC State's last year was two yards. Okay. Now that was an elite linebacking core, but just for reference, that that that's a huge difference. That's a huge gap to bridge. They bring in Braden Oliver, who I know you know a little bit about. I know a lot about Andrew White or Andre White. He's actually a pretty good player. I liked him a lot. He struggled a little bit last year. He battled injuries all year. I think he'll be healthy. In the years before, he was a really good. He was a really good downhill linebacker. He rushed the passer pretty well um, when he blitzed. I, I thought he was pretty good. Solid tackling. Doesn't necessarily have that lateral speed that you know you might need at higher level competition. But it, it was a tough loss. I thought for AM in terms of linebacker depth in the transfer portal this off season. I thought. I thought. I think a lot of people have different opinions on that, but. What do you what do you think of Braden Oliver? I, I want to I really want to know. Come from Minnesota at linebacker. Yeah, I, he was so a lot of people. He he technically started for us, but he did not play a ton of snaps in terms of our base defense. Yes, is a four three, but most of the time we were in a nick. We were in nickel. We were four two five. Uh, so he was the odd man out. Uh, but on run games and in the Big Ten West, where you have to stop the run, you get teams like Wisconsin of the old, right? Iowa, even Nebraska sometimes. Illinois. Illinois, Northwestern, he to run the ball all the time, all the damn time. He played a lot, and he's really good against the run. Yes, I, I did. There are two linebackers that they did lose though, combined for two hundred thirty tackles, which is a lot. But yes, they weren't very productive tackles, and that's why they kind of, you know, didn't have a great uh, defense last year, especially running the ball. Um, it was actually terrible. Um, but I think they'll be better defensive line. Yes, you lose Keon White, but everybody else is back. So they, they will be better against the run, especially at defensive tackle. Everybody's back. Yeah. Which is nice. I, I do like Daquan Dallas. I, I think he's really good. I Kyle yeah. Kennard gotta see a jump. Need to see it. If they're gonna be good on the defensive line, I think he needs to take a jump. But for sure, yeah. for sure. But I, I do think it, the, the linebacker that's actually getting the most hype out of spring right now is Trenelius Tatum, who's going into year three. With Georgia Tech there, he actually had the best linebacker of all the uh had the best spring really of all okay. the linebackers. It's good to know. Um, so they're gonna have three guys in there that they believe in, right? Which is nice uh for that, even though only two really play all the time. But um, yeah, to be the strength of this defense though is this, the secondaries. Uh oh, Zamar yeah. Walton. And then it's for real. This secondary is for real this year, by the way. It is for real. Yeah, Zamari Walton is off to Ole Miss, right? That's that's a pretty big loss. He was just it starting is. corner. But they got a bunch of pieces back. Miles Sims, KJ Wallace, good cornerbacks. Power five experience. The Miles uh, Brooks Wallace. is unbelievable. He's awesome. It finally clicked last year. He finally got He's healthy. unbelievable. He's he so good at football. First team, second team all SEC at, at, at safety. And even they got a bunch of they got a bunch of depth there at safeties and versatility. Lamiles Brooks might play in the nickel too there. And the 45 defense, we know about it. Very important position, very tough position. Yeah. Clay yeah. Powell Lee as a as a freshman last year, a great, um, almost fifty like, tackles. Really good for a freshman. I thought he played fantastic. That was my yeah. opinion though. But yeah, Rodney Shelley is also a freshman that played a little bit. He's coming back. Jalen King, I think he was kind of the starter at the beginning of the year, and then he's coming back too. Uh, but they might move King to safety, to deep safety, and then and bring Lamont's Brook down to the line of scrimmage, which I like because you just get him close to the ball, make plays, do these other things. Um, yeah, I I. I don't know. I everything I'm hearing and I, I believe in. I think this team's gonna win more than five, four and a half games. I, I know there are a lot of question marks. I know, you know, in one year, how much is it gonna change? They were terrible last year. They've been bad for a while. They still won five games last year. They still won five games. Now, yes, the schedule is probably not that great, but I mean, they got some good t- running back. Those Hassan Hall. Yeah. Well, Look, they they won two that. games. They won two games without Jeff Sims. Like I think that that's an important stat that I was looking at. I was like, okay, so they can win without Jeff Sims. Okay, yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. They beat North Carolina right last year at the end of the season. I mean, yeah. yes, North Carolina was trending down 
Absolutely. Hard. They beat North Carolina at North Carolina. So, like, yeah, I, I yeah. So, I, I think offensively, they'll be better. And I think healthy, hopefully. Uh, and, and more continuity there. Their staff is much better this year. Chris Winkie, also a call offense coordinator, will be quarterback, excuse me, quarterback coach as well. Uh, Buster Falkner loves the tight ends. And yes, they're not great, but they did bring in some transfers. They got Brett Seth, say they're from Georgia. They got, I think, Jackson Long from USF. And they also have Dylan Leonard returning as a senior. He's going to have to carry load as well. Evan Dickens, though, a name to watch out for. For true freshman running back from IMG had a real nice spring. Real, real nice spring. Um, yeah, he'll be good for him. Yeah, I'm not gonna hate you for that. I'm not gonna hate you for that. 